gentlemen welcome back to the shop man it feels good to be home tinkering i've just i got projects up the wazoo just gonna be whopping them out here this is actually a video response to dave jones uh, youtube doesn't do video responses anymore for better or for worse but this is a video response to his recent maybe even today it depends how quick i get this edited his video on how to take back ownership of your devices and actually get past those tamper-proof void warranty seals. He used the heat laminated rigider part of a static free bag, a static dissipative bag. Uh, here's what I've been using. Uh, yeah, tongue in cheek call it the owner stick. It's a play on words on ownership. Of course, you buy something and you can't have a peek on the insides. Do you really own it? In my opinion, no, you don't really own it if you're not allowed to take it apart. It's ridiculous. You paid your hard-earned cash. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want with it. So this is a simple, clever little tool that you put in your toolbox and you won't need it until you really need it. Because if you fuck up that void warranty seal, and something happens, well, you are up Shit's Creek, my friend. However, I'm not one to let a little foil and adhesive stand in the way of a good time. I'm going to show you how to make this owner stick for yourself. The first part of this project is the hardest part. It's procuring this Teflon. This is a plastic, a fluoropolymer of some sort. I really don't know too much about it other than it's a non-stick coating on cooking pans and it's slipperier than grass through a goose. I'll also show you another trick once we're done the machining to actually make it just as slick as... Right, I was saying the Teflon is the hardest part to get. It's expensive as well. It's the paragon of plastics. You can bring it up to 600 degrees F. It doesn't melt. Uh, it's rigid. It's not... It's super, super slippery, but it is expensive. I figure four to five times the cost of steel. But of course, for the home gamer, the real problem is you can't buy crops of it. I think the smallest piece that I could find was a 12 by 12 sheet of the stuff. That's a hundred bucks, 130 Canadian pesos worth. That's uh, quite a bit of money. Then you factor in the machining and also the silicon lubricant that we're going to put on there. You're going to spend 10 bucks on that. Now all of a sudden this little widget that you want to build yourself to uh, help you avoid not void warranties is going to cost you 150 bucks. So if you can find yourself some Teflon, it's well worth having. Uh, just chuck it underneath the lay there and let it gather dust till you need it, because it's definitely worth having. Now, I really like machining plastics, especially this one, um, because I can get away with a lot more than I can with steel. Of course, this is the old clapped out Bridgeport milling machine. Can't do any climb milling because it self feeds, and I'll show you how that works. But Essentially, I can do climb milling, conventional milling, all that stuff, and I get to pretend it's a, it's a big boy mill. But I got the piece in the vise here, and we're going to square up one. We're just going to square it up, essentially. I have it on very good authority that machining Teflon or any kind of plastic for a living it gets to be a pain in the ass. It's a lot like having beers with me. After about 15 minutes, it's a job. And, of course, depending on your work situation, you can always tell them to go fuck their hat. What's the worst they can do, fire you? But essentially in conventional milling, the cutter takes the big chip and then tapers it towards the end of the cut. Uh, and it's better to do climb milling for the cutter because it starts at the wedge, the real thin section, and then ends up in the real thick part of the cut. However, the downside to that is it's self-feeding. It wants to feed in. So if you have a table that's worn out, it's going to tweak over and feed itself in and break your cutter and you know your safety squints might not do the job at that point. If that were steel, quite possibly, I'd be on my way to the emergency room.
like to do this in steps because the edge gets quite thin and there's a high probability that it breaks off. Now we got it roughed out on the mill and then just you married guys, yeah, you'll be used to this, the old handwork. That's the best way to do it for onesies and twosies. I think what I'll do is, uh, well, I'll show you how to make it. If you're interested, please uh, go ahead and make one for yourself or two or five for your friends, whatever. Um, it is a pain right in the cunning linguist though because it's so expensive to buy the raw material. So if anybody's interested in these, I think it'd be a fun project to build a purpose-built machine just to make these little widgets. It show the process of going into and developing the machine. Of course, you could do it on the CNC, but it would be a lot better to have, you know, funner just to have a machine that's automated, stick it in there, you know, polishes it all up. I think that'd be pretty cool. So if you're interested in, uh, in having one of these, and you don't have the wherewithal or you can't find the material. I mean, spending 150 bucks for one of these is just ridiculous. So if you are interested, put your name down below and we'll go around and see if there's enough interest. We'll go ahead and build a purpose-built machine to make these little widgets. All right, looking at it, it's probably a buck an inch for material, Let's figure three bucks for the processing, two bucks for shipping, right around 10 bucks a, a widget, I would say, end user cost. So if you're interested in something like this, it's gonna cost you 10 bucks, put your name down below, and it'll help you, well, you put it in your toolbox, but when you need one, partner, you need one. We got it pretty good with the 600. Now we're going to go to 1200 and just give the specifically just the cutting edge here. We want that to slide through the adhesive, so we want that real nice and polished. So the great thing about using Teflon for this is that it doesn't cut through the seal, and you can warm up the adhesive, and this stays rigid. So it's, it's a double whammy, works great. Also, uh, I make special, I keep this stuff around because I make special tools for Buna and O-rings and, and installing seals and that sort of stuff where you can't mar the work and it's real soft durometer. This is a Teflon, sure comes in handy. A wiser man than me once said, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Well, I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. No embellishments on it, of course, but here's the real trick for where the rubber meets the road is shock oil, this uh, dimethicone. This of course is a, well it's a silicone. And like I done said before, just slickered grass through a goose. Well that took quite a bit longer than I, I thought, things always do that. It took about 25 minutes, so maybe more of an arts and crafts on company time type deal. But it'd be interesting to see if, uh, if anybody's interested, how quick we can get these made what you know if we can get it down to 10 minutes a piece or five minutes a piece or it'd be interesting and now to test it out as an example here's the panasucket lithium ion battery pack with a foil seal just gonna warm it up here with the industrial hair dryer and you want it warm not not cooked and the good thing about this is you can warm the teflon up at the same time And there we have it. Not a mark on it. Just put that back on. No one's the wiser. Bob's your auntie. Same for hard drive seals.
Maybe that's a little too hot. Or maybe I'm just a pussy. Of course, you can do this with a knife, but the problem is you run the risk of cutting the seal, of course. Whereas you just want to cut into the adhesive. Nothing more. There you go. If you uh, get it so it curls up like heat shrink, you're going to want to go back about a quarter turn. But you can always give it more heat. You can never give it less heat if you go too far. So just, you know, play it by ear. It's one of those cases where discretion is the better part of not completely fucking this up. There you go, full access. Stickers fully intact, all the seals intact. I don't know what legitimate purpose you'd have going in there. Chances are you go in there and you break the seal. I think your ones and zeros are gonna be completely fuckered. However, I'm quite sure one of our kind viewers in Guadalajara could enlighten us as to what for you're gonna might need to hide something in there. Well, thanks a lot for watching. That is how you make an owner stick. Stick it to the man by not voiding your warranty when you're in there poking and prodding at the tinkly bits. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I think it's been long enough. Go ahead and put your dick in some ice. And you guys that are uh, throwing a couple bucks in the hat there on Patreon, much obliged now that I'm home. I got some time off coming to me. Guess what we're going to work on? That's right, the flashlight. Stay tuned for that in the coming days. Thanks a lot.